What is happening everybody? I hope you're all well. Now a little while ago on this channel we piloted a new video idea and it was like a slightly more considered cup of tea in the morning with me. Today's tea is a special rare green tea from Betty's in Yorkshire. We'll come on to Yorkshire imminently and today's mug is from Disneyland Resort Paris. Um, if you like this idea, this segment, can you do me a favour? Can you just give it a like? just so that I can monitor it, just so that we'll do it again. If you don't like it, if nobody likes it, I'll never do it again. If you happen to enjoy it, like it, and then uh, it could uh, reappear very soon. The first place for us to start is, of course, the Hawthorns, where Leeds United won 5-0 against West Brom. Now, I've been getting a little bit of stick from the Yorkshire Constabulary recently. Uh, I said something on Twitter about Bielsa, and it did not go down well. All I said was, when you lost to Manchester United, the narrative around Bielsa and around the way Leeds performed was very complimentary and I don't think it would have been like that for any other manager. Got whooped 6-2 in a crunch match against the rival, conceding six, and everybody was saying how well Leeds played. All I said was I thought that was slightly unjust and I've also flagged that I don't think he should have been nominated for the manager of the year. I concede that Leeds are doing far better than I thought they would and they are looking excellent and it was typified last night. The pragmatists versus the purists, and I, I really didn't see it coming. I rate Sam Allardyce so highly as a manager. I think he's, I think he's brilliant, and I genuinely think he will keep West Brom up despite the embarrassment from last night. But Leeds were masterful. They were absolutely brilliant, and they've shocked a lot of people this year. I think it's fair to say now that they are as impressive as Sheffield United were last year. I think that's fair to say. So. Any Leeds fan watching this video, firstly, I'm falling on my sword a bit. I didn't think it would be this uh, this impressive from you. Secondly, I wasn't that severe. I just said the 6-2 narrative was slightly unjust and so was the fever thing. So I hope, I hope that we can be friends again. Um, although I imagine not too many of you will be watching this video because I doubt you subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you are watching and you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing that now. Um, Leeds, though, we, you know, we have to go into it. Leeds... They played West Brom off the pitch. It was so, so impressive. Um, there was another own goal in there for West Brom. There's four own goals this season from West Brom. I don't know what Allardyce is going to do to rectify that, but it cannot continue, especially the nature of this goal. I felt actually slightly, unfair, uh, slightly unjust on Rafinha because he scored the goal of the game. But the goal everyone's talking about is the own goal, which was calamitous. It was a catastrophe from the West Brom defence, something that... Allardyce will be desperate to alleviate. You know, he's dealt a bit of a harsh blow. Kieran Gibbs was training uh, pre-match. He then picked up a knock, couldn't play, had to rejig the defence, and they never recovered. Uh, but I, mean, I don't really want to focus on West Brom because I must acknowledge that Leeds were totally dazzling, and they dazzled West Brom. West Brom didn't know what had hit them. It was like a heavyweight fight, if, and they were knocked out in the first round, tried to continue, and, and it should have been stopped. At that point, it was 4-0 at half-time. <sighs> Leeds attacked from every single angle. I think seven players were involved in Leeds goals. Seven! I mean, they, they were just so aggressive, so brilliant. And crucially, something that I've given Bielsa a bit of stick for, the amount of clean sheets that his side managed to accrue. A little bit of humble pie. That's two clean sheets in a row, which again is very impressive. Um... But West Brom, there's an uphill struggle here for Sam Allardyce. I think they have now conceded, what, 13 goals in three games at home. So I don't quite know what's going to happen there. But I do rate Allardyce so highly. I think he can get this West Brom side safe. This will be a bit of a learning curve for him, watching what happened against Leeds, being, dis being destroyed in that manner. He will bounce back, I believe. But I'm taking nothing away from from Leeds United. The night belonged to them. They're first up on my roster of matches to cover. And to any Leeds fan watching, a slight apology. Next up, it's Brighton versus Arsenal. When it finished, Brighton nil, Arsenal won. Two wins on the bounce. And as I feared, the Chelsea result is going to galvanise this Arsenal side. Arteta needed a massive result in that Chelsea game. They got one and they've used it as a springboard to mount a charge up the table. They will look good again, I thought. I thought he got the selection right. And there were two kids that shone. We need to discuss three, arguably. We'll come on to the third. But I think two were head and shoulders above everybody else. 
there was a moment actually, Martinelli, excellent player. They need to keep him fit. He was so hungry, so desperate for it. And there was a moment that I think typified his entire performance and also the youth at Arsenal compared to the more senior pros. There was a, a moment where Martinelli was pressing from the front, charging, charging the defence. They were playing one twos to try and get rid of him. They couldn't shirk him. Martinelli looked for support. If you know, if, if Aubameyang had come with him, they could have you know, perhaps won a corner, perhaps something even greater. Aubameyang sat, didn't make, didn't do the chasing, wouldn't put the leg work in that Martinelli was putting in. And you understand why, on some level, perhaps more experienced, perhaps realised there wasn't so much in it. Obviously older, but Martinelli's reaction was a joy to behold for any Arsenal fan, I assure you. He barracked his captain. He was urging him to charge, urging him to show the passion that he was demonstrating, leading from the front, dragging other players alongside him. And that kind of leadership from such a young man is going to carry Arsenal annoyingly up the table. Any talk of relegation is obviously over. Any talk of a rele relegation battle is obviously over. Martinelli was brilliant, but again, I think the night belonged to... Bukayo Saka. That is 15 assists this year in 2020 for Bukayo Saka. What a season he has had. What a player he has been for Arsenal. He is so young and they pin their hopes on him and he has answered them. Again, he was brilliant. He set up Lacazette beautifully. He actually set, put a couple on a plate for other players as well who didn't take their chances. Lacazette finished really well. First touch, basically. Um, but... Gosh, he was so good. He, he gave Ben Chilwell a really rough ride the other night and that continued in his form against Brighton. Brilliant player. And this is what Arteta needs to do now. Focus on the youth. Willian out. Aubameyang has to play for his place. It has to be a meritocracy. If he deserves his place, he gets it, but it's no longer a guarantee. And let the likes of Smith Rowe lead the charge, who was also phenomenal. Um, I, thought he, I thought he was brilliant. I thought Arsenal got it right. But I also think that Potter got it wrong. Now, that isn't something that you say about Arsenal often, is it? But Potter got it wrong. A man who has got it so right against Arsenal on so many occasions, got it so wrong. They seem to rest four strikers. They have four strikers on the bench, but none on the pitch. No recognised striker on the pitch. I didn't know he was playing up front when I saw the team line-up. Weird. Um, weird move. Obviously, Arsenal had more rest than Brighton. They had an extra day. The Chelsea game was a day earlier than the Brighton game. But I don't quite understand what he was thinking there, Potter. He gave Arteta a really strong opportunity. Not playing a striker seemed weird. Eventually they got one on, but the damage was done. And Brighton end 2020 with one win at home all season. And naturally that win came against... Arsenal. 21 is coming. I sit next to Adam McCola on the kickoff, as I'm sure you all know, and do you know how many times I've heard the phrase 21 is coming? I'm starting to believe that it might be. Manchester United beat Wolverhampton Wanderers in the manner of champions, in the way that Manchester United teams of old have beaten teams. In the to in that exact nature, the Solskjaer era used to win games like this all the time. In fact, I've heard Ole Gunnar Solskjaer saying that Manchester United do not score enough late goals. This is the latest goal they have scored since Michael Owen won the derby against City. Do you remember that? 4-3 it finished. 2006-7 maybe? Um, not since then have... Uh, not since then have Manchester United scored this late. And it shows that they are now dreaming of the title. Solskjaer has obviously rained on that parade, said that it's not happening. But, they, you, you know, they're two points off Liverpool with virtually half the season played. Of course they're thinking of the title. And the nature of that result, it was lucky. It was so lucky. It was a deflected goal so late in the game. You can't ask for more than that. I think they are now I think they are now in the title race. Serious luck involved, but Manchester United, the question is, it's not even about how they got on against Wolves. Wolves were worthy of a win, I thought. But they didn't get it. So Manchester United now need to be considered for a title charge. Am I correct on that? I will actually make that my pinned comment, so please let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, and if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing it right now. And finally, last word to any Leeds fan watching this video. There is no agenda. I've just flagged a few things. I get it, and perhaps I, uh, I got a few bits wrong as well. Uh, I fall on my sword. I bid you good grace, and look, 
My family from Yorkshire, man. My, northern, my, my wife's family. I'm drinking Betty's. Any proud Yorkshireman, anyone from Leeds, they know Betty's. North Allerton, Harrogate. Love, I'm with you. In a bit.